Amen. The humble man, God protects and delivers. The humble, he loves and consoles. To the humble, he inclines himself. On the humble, he bestows generous grace. And after he has been brought low, raises him up unto glory. To the humble, he reveals his secrets and sweetly invites and draws him unto himself. The humble man, in the midst of reproaches, remains in great peace, for his dependence is on God and not on the world. My dear brethren, my dear children, these words come from the most famous book that every Christian shall have on his bedside table, the Imitation of Christ. Imitation of Christ is our ticket to heaven. Yes, it is. Have for heaven is our goal, as we have been called to be partakers of the divine life. However, we need someone who can help us to reach this supernatural goal. Who else than Jesus Christ himself, the Word of God, made man to elevate our human nature to a supernatural way and permit us to answer to this divine call? God called us. God saved mankind and continues to save human beings, guiding them to the harbor of salvation. During our novena this week, we honor on a special way the heart of the one who guides us on the way, not only with advice, but with his entire life, having taken our human nature to show us how we should do. And here are his own words. Learn of me that I am meek and humble of heart. I am humble of heart. Humility is the foundation of the building of our virtues. Without it, pride goes over everything and it is impossible to fulfill our goal. Humility is like the dike that pre prevents the waves of pride from devastating the harbor where our virtues rest. Humility protects us from the assaults of the raging sea. And real humility is founded on the rock of Christ, as he said in St. Matthew's Gospel, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father who is in heaven, he shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Everyone, therefore, that hears these words and does them shall be likened to a wise man that built his house upon a rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and they beat upon that house, and it, it fell not, for it was founded on a rock. And as our Lord said in the same Gospel from St. Matthew, Learn of me that I am meek and humble of heart, and you shall find rest to your souls. You shall find rest to your souls. What does that mean but peace and certitude that we are on the right way? Despite the world, its noise, its bad advertisements, its immorality, we will remain in peace. We will remain in peace as the imitation of Christ told us, because we are humble. That is to say, because we know our human condition, we remain in our place, doing our duty of state of life, simply and without fuss, as St. Francis de Sales would say. We pray for others, of course, but we are first preoccupied by our own sanctification, our own progress before the eyes of God. We do not compare ourselves all the time with others. Holiness is not a race or a competition. We are all going in the same direction. Time is provi provided by God, and it is the time of your life, so do not waste it. Our souls, your souls, dear, my dear faithful, are all different. The common point between us is the love of God. We walk ahead because we love God, and we know that this life is a life of penance, 
a life of sacrifice, because after this life, there is another one for which we have to prepare ourselves. Just as athletes prepare for a competition by working for a long time and accepting suffering in order to achieve the best result, so we work on our souls to enable them to grow and develop in the love of God as much as possible so that they can then enjoy divine rewards in heaven. No need to be the best in this world, for it is very hard to remain humble before God when you are above others. Pride was the beginning of evil on this earth. If the devil and his angels rebelled against God, and then Adam and Eve wanted to be like God, this temptation is not over for us. This is, this is not new that praises and glory can close eyes and destroy wills. Let us remain where God placed us. Let us thank Him if we received a lot, but let us thank Him if we receive less than others. For our Lord said, And to whomsoever much is given, of him much shall be required, and to whom they have committed much, of him they will demand the more. Thus, dear faithful, let us ask today and during this novena the graces we need to remain at the right place, humble, really, that is to say, seeing first the beam in our own eye before seeing the mud in our neighbor's eye. We will always have a lot of progress to make before being truly a saint. But remember what the author of the Imitation of Christ told us at the very beginning of this, of this homily. All the benefits we can earn if we are humble. The humble man, God protects and delivers. The humble he loves and consoles. To the humble he inclines himself. On the humble he bestows generous grace, and after he has been brought low, raises him up unto glory. To the humble he reveals his secrets, and sweetly invites and draws him unto himself. The humble man, in the middle of reproaches, remains in great peace, for his dependence is on God and not on the world. So, let us keep our eyes focused on Jesus Christ, who tells us this very important truth through St. Matthew again. Blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed be the humble of heart, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.